What's up everybody, it's your boy Reggie Casual. We back, back to business, like we always do. So today we're talking about five L's in fashion in 2020. I think that's like the name of this. In 2020, the five fashion L's, right? And normally what we do is we talk about the five fashion L's that other people took, but we're gonna talk about me real quick. I'm gonna tell you my five fashion L's so you don't have to make them. It's part of this brand new thing that we're doing. Concentrate more on styling and giving you guys more insight into building better wardrobes. I'm not gonna tell you how to dress, but I'm gonna show you some methodology, some philosophy coming from the house of casual that can give you more insight into building a better wardrobe. So these five L's, not just gonna talk about my mistakes, but I'm also gonna be informing you about brands that I'm looking at, style tips that I'm going to consider, so you can be better than me. You gotta be better than me. You, I, I'm probably already better than me. But with that being said, intro please. That, that intro is not gonna be forever, right? I think this is one of the final weeks that we're gonna be using that intro, so. Say farewell. I mean, it's gonna be different, but it's still gonna be cool. Anyway, yeah, but uh, the first fashion L that I took in 2020 was my insistence on wearing black, white, monochrome styles, like all the time. Now, this was predominantly because I was focusing so much on silhouette in 2020, which I'll get into a little bit later, but many people may not know that back in the day, during that color blocking menswear contemporary era, I was into it. I was in there, bro. I was in there. I was wearing like salmon pants with powder blue Oxford shirts. I was that guy. I, you may not even believe me, but I was wearing that kind of stuff all the time. And on the streetwear side, I was wearing like lime green high tops. It was nuts. And then I retreated away from it once I moved back to Japan. Uh, because I started getting far more interested in styles by Jun Takahashi with Undercover, Takahiro Miyashita with Takahiro Miyashita the Soloist, of course Rick Owens, uh, he's out west of course, but big time Yoji Yamamoto, Comme des Garçons, these labels that I just started getting far more into once I came back to Japan. It reached an apex in 2020 because I looked at my claws and I was just like, dude, I have all of that, like the entire essential program for the Yoji Yamamoto look, I have it all. And then it just got boring, it got too easy. So what I wanna do this year is employ a little bit more color, but add it to the silhouettes that I've come to enjoy after exploring Yoji Yamamoto, Comme des Garçons, Undercover, these labels that I have kind of drifted towards. Getting heavier into Sakai, Hermes from out west, you know, I know a lot of you guys like Hermes. Needles, Junya Watanabe, Man, uh, Capital. Looking at Monkey Time over here in Japan. Get more into those labels that have what I'm looking for without going against the style that I've already kind of developed for myself. All right, so the number four L that I took in fashion this year was definitely my problems with silhouette. Now, if you guys have ever been on my personal Instagram that's at Reggie Casual, where I talked about this episode that I had with the diaper Yoji pants. Like, like how, how, am, I, how am I gonna wear these, right? Like, how am I gonna wear these? Yes, the diaper Yoji pants era for me, uh, it just didn't work, <laughs> right? It's an unfortunate reality that I am around 170 to 173 centimeters tall, which is around 5'8 uh, in Western measurements. And wearing anything really baggy, uh, you have to be very careful. And that might sound crazy to a lot of people. It's like, yo, you like Yoji Yamamoto? You like Yoji Yamamoto. But it's not about Yoji Yamamoto, the brand. I'm more of a person that focuses on pieces. So it's definitely a fashion L that I took in 2020 was not understanding what silhouette I was really, like I felt best in, that I looked best in according to me, right? So this year, I, I've kind of fixed it. I fixed it by the end of the year. And this year I'm just being more mindful about what pieces I'm picking up. The number three L that I took in 2020, look at my hands. There's nothing on my hands right now, right? There's nothing on my wrists. I got something on my neck. I got my, my, my little necklace from Christian Dada, right? 
but nothing, no nothing. That's a big L because one of the things that I pride myself, my style on, is my use of accessories. And I didn't buy any accessories in 2020. Not one. Now I didn't go to any small shops. I didn't make any accessories. I'll get into that in a little bit, but I didn't do any of that. I didn't do any of that. When it comes to me and accessories, I either go to like back alleys and streets and whatnot that nobody's ever gonna be like, yo, ID on the necklace, son. I'll be like, yo, back alley in Shimo Kitazawa, bro. That, that's where I found it. So if you can find a back alley in Shimo Kitazawa in Los Angeles, more power to you. But I definitely skimped this year when it came to accessories and I just wanna build my accessory game back up. Yeah, I like the feather necklaces, but I'll go for Christian Dada before I go for Goros because why? Or why do, why, why do I have to stay in line? Why do I have to get the Goros kind? Why, why do I have to get a Chrome Hearts ring when I can go to Jam Homemade, which is a label that you should definitely check out. Speaking of Goros, you know, Christian Dada only made this one necklace, but you can go to Hotem, which has some pretty cool cool stuff too. I actually have a Hotem necklace, necklace myself. I've already talked about Rooster King if you follow on Instagram. I'll talk about different brands on Instagram so if you really want to know like some of the stuff that I'm picking up Instagram lives all that good stuff I'm all about like getting people getting accessories from individuals and brands that are kind of out of sight and out of mind like nobody knows who they are I'm all about supporting them so if you're a brand that's making accessories I'm more likely to wear your accessories than I'm likely to wear somebody's shirt or hat because I've already have like a base style so it's very hard for me to like wear somebody's shirt <laughs> or I, mean, I can wear somebody's hat, but it's really hard for me to like wear somebody's shirt unless it's like something that really fits my style. But when you're talking about accessories, I wear anybody's accessories. I'll be like, yo, rings, freaking bracelets, necklaces. I'm all for it. I'm here for it. So definitely want to start getting back into that. And I will certainly uh, be showcasing them on the channel and on Instagram. So. Again, check out Jam Homemade, that's one of my favorites. All right, so the number two thing that I messed up in 2020 as far as fashion is concerned, I paid more and made less. You guys may not know this, I mean, any given year, I make at least, I make at least remake or upcycle or just a completely new piece. I make at least two to three pieces every year. I did none of that in 2020. I made no pieces in 2020, which is crazy. Definitely not going to happen in 2021. I'm definitely going to be making stuff a lot more upcycling, maybe some original pieces, something that we'll be doing a little bit later with uh, one of the new series on the channel. Uh, but yeah, um, make stuff. Don't be like me, make stuff. All right, that, that's, 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 my, uh, that's my tip to you as far as fashion and style is concerned and my number two L that I took. Some people probably think I took more L's and be like, yo man, that hat is kind of ugly. So yeah, that's another L, but this 2021. So that's the first L that you took. <laughs> that's ridiculous. All right, so the number one L I took in 2020. Number one L I took in 2020. Uh, I think this is better with visual aid. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this. This right here, this is absolutely ridiculous. Let me get my bearings real quick, hold up. Listen guys, I, I love sneakers. You guys know this, I'm a big sneaker fan, but I wouldn't actually consider myself a bona fide sneaker head. I'm more of a connoisseur of sneakers. So if it's a brand or a collaboration that I really, really like, I'm going to get it. But if it's a sneaker that I don't necessarily mess with, I'm not gonna buy it. So like out of this, there's not one dunk. I know a lot of you are like, yo, which sneakers did you get? If you wanna see what those sneakers are, all you have to do is join us on Instagram right after this video. But I bought so many sneakers last year in 2020 that it almost, my, it blows my mind because you can't go anywhere, right? Nothing's open. <laughs> like nobody's doing anything. So why am I wearing my sneakers? Why am I showing off sneakers? And I blame Landy. 
LD into HK. I blame you. That's my man's though. I, I love Landy. That's my brother. But dog. I blame you because I saw Landy's collection of sneakers and it wasn't like I was trying to catch up, but I was just like, dang man, I wish I had these many options. Knowing damn well, I have a lot of options myself. I just don't have as many as he does. It's just a fashion L because I concentrated so much on sneakers rather than focusing on all the other things on the list that I told you. I didn't do those things because of sneakers. I bought so many sneakers, so that's not an L that I'm going to take in 2021, but I'm just gonna start, you know, wearing the things that I have and just being more creative with how I put those things because I got enough sneakers to last me a lifetime, to be honest with you. So it's definitely an L that I took and I don't want you to make the same mistake. Don't want you to make the same mistake. Not, again, not, there's not a dunk in here, not one dunk. I don't mess with dunks. I don't mess with dunks. This is great. This is fantastic for me because I'm not just fighting for scraps. It's great. It's fantastic. Anyway, yeah, those are the five L's that I took in fashion in 2020. And I will not make those same mistakes, but we will have a fun filled year for you. Fun filled year. <laughs> What am I, this is like Disneyland? No, we're gonna have a great year for you guys, giving you more insight into building your wardrobe and not just me telling you what to wear, but giving you more brands and more insight into other labels and other designers that you should definitely check out both here in Japan and worldwide. So if you guys got any things that you wanna know about, any brands that you wanna know more insight into, any brands that you wanna take a look at, let them be known in the comments or just let us know some other fashion L's that maybe you took or maybe you thought that I did in 2020 and maybe even now. You may not like something I'm wearing now, I don't know. But most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international fashion, culture, and business from Tokyo. It's your boy and keep it casual. You see how we changed the background in the middle of the video? That's hilarious. Sorry, sorry about that. And I'll see you guys in a minute.